Hey everyone, I talked about a lot of damaging abilities and debuffing abilities, but what about abilities to help heal you once you are hurt? Uh, or help? abilities that help you heal a little faster? <sighs> well, in this episode, I will tell you about all the different healing abilities in the game, as well as the abilities to help, I guess, boost your healing capability, if that makes any sense. But we'll get into what I'm talking about later on. First, we'll start with some healing abilities. The first one I'm going to talk about is called Pack Heal. And as the name implies, you need to be part of a pack. If you don't know how to start a pack, um, it could look, I can make a video later showing you how to start packs up. I think I, I believe I touched it, it touched base in my How to Play video, very first video on this channel. Um, but if I didn't, I will make a video later showing you how to make a pack and how it works. But back to the healing part. <laughs> so... The pack heal is simply just, you have to be part of the pack, but as long as you're in the pack with a person who's using the, I say if I say this wrong, but the Bree, Bree Quack, Be Quick, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce these things, but if you're the person using that ability and they're in your pack, they will heal you as long as you're close to them, I'll assume, and in their pack, but you have to be in their pack. So moving on from that, next we have the Restoration Beam, and this is a relatively newer ability, it came out with the Annie that came out. I did a brief video on that uh, on the Annie uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, one of the newer dev creatures. Little person can only heal, cannot harm in any way. Anyway, the restoration beam is just like you saw in the game of beam in my previous episodes, and um, like the breath attacks. You hit the same button, you shoot a beam out. Based on how many orbs your Annie has behind you, you will heal more uh, percentage of the health so to speak um, and you have one when you're a baby two orbs whenever you are a teenager and three when you're an adult and um, you could also heal with Annie by just attacking people but I didn't put that in here because that's just a basic attack thing I went over in the Annie video but the restoration beam just like any other breath attack you could aim it with the, with the mouse and you could shoot it at the target and it will slowly heal them up and actually helps heal burn and poison or burn poison and bleed faster i believe now i'm not going to touch base on it much in this episode as i talked about during the breath episode but don't forget there's also the healing ability of the sock the sock carn sock and the big flying bird um tier four creature that has that the heal breath i went over it in the breath episode because i figured it fit more into that since it is a breath attack than it would really into the healing one, but that ability also ha is is able to heal if you're in the pack with the creature, or you can heal your, if you are the creature itself, you can heal yourself by using that ability. But on to the next thing, the next and actually last of the healing abilities is the passive heal. This was brought with the new creature, the Yura. It's the big flying and semi-aquatic dragon-looking thing. Uh, what it does is simply, all you got to do is be laying down, as the Euro would be laying down, and lay down, anyone laying down next to you will also be healed. And all the healing abilities, while I'm, while I'm thinking about it, and I'll put something on the screen to show you what I'm talking about, while you're healing somebody, or you're being healed, I should say, the bar, the life bar goes to like a brighter green color, maybe like a very light blue. It's hard to, for me to tell. You might be able to tell better than me, but it will change color to show that you are getting healed by ability. But what the passive heal does is it makes you heal a little faster when you're laying next to the Ura, or if you are the Ura. All you gotta do is lay down next to him and rest, and you will heal fast. Okay, I want to cut in here and take and take a little a little break in between here. Um, to remind you guys, please subscribe to the channel if you like the videos. Um, please give me a thumbs up. Um, it's f thumbs up and subscribing is free. There's <laughs> no cost at all. Um, so please, if you enjoy this stuff, it would help me out greatly if you would go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well as give me a thumbs up. And even better, if you can leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought. I really appreciate it. But let's go ahead and get back to the episode. Now that covers all the healing abilities. But there are two abilities that help in the healing process, I should say. I don't know the best way to put it. Um, the first one, uh, it would be another ability of the Annie, is Keen Observer. If you play as Annie, if you if you have played as Annie, you'll see, you'll see it. And I'll put something on the screen to show you. But if you haven't played as Annie, 
Above all the creatures near you, you'll see their life bar up on the screen as a green bar. It won't tell you how much hit points they have, just like yours on the screen doesn't tell you how much you have. But you'll see how badly they are hurt and see if they need healing or not. So it's great for that support type role that the Annie plays. You can sit back and protect your team, so to speak, your pack, and um, heal them up. You don't have to be in a pack with them. It, it works any creature in your area. You will see their life bar. But it's a good way if you're playing that support role in your group to keep an eye on where they're at. So you don't try to guess. You just keep on healing whoever you think needs most healing. The next ability uh, that helps with healing is Mud Placer. And as the name implies, Mud Placer, you place mud in a big old big patch underneath your creature. Right now, there are only two creatures in the game that use it as of making this video. That's the, the Aisho and the Merlk. The Merlk's been able to do that for like ever. Um, but the Aisho is a newer creature and it's able to do it. Um, but you place the mud patch down and just like any mud patch you find in the game already, like even the ones that are already placed throughout the game at different um, watering holes, you hold N to burrow yourself down in it and you'll see the bar um, charging up until you're, until you're able to actually get the, the mud buff. But you lay down in it for a while. When you come back up, you will have a symbol above your, your creature which shows all your buffs and debuffs. And it'll tell you what it does, but it'll let you know that you have the mud buff. What the mud buff does is it increases your health regen by about 25%, as well as doubling your burn and poison healing capabilities. So you'll be able to heal from burn and poison a lot faster. Sorry, not burn, but bleed and poison a lot faster. My bad, it's bleed and poison a lot faster, um, as well as he just heal in general a lot faster. So it's great for any creature to heal a little bit faster if you don't have a, a healing friend with you or if you aren't a healing creature yourself. And you, even the plain mud puddles laying around, you can lay down in them and you can heal yourself like that, or help heal yourself quicker like that. Um, and a bonus to the mud patches, the mud patches you find out in the wild and the mud patches you drop as a creature, they will also hide your scent, which comes in very handy with that last update where they made it so not only not only do you know the creatures nearby but you see a purple line going to them and you see like what kind of creature it is and all that stuff so it's really helpful because if you are trying to hide from someone trying to kill you and you use the mud patch then it's, they're not going to be able to find out where you're hiding now um, or if you're trying to uh, track someone down and kill them if they're chasing somebody you can put that mud patch on you and you can hide your scent so they can't keep track of where you're at and you kind of sneak up on them. So the mud patch helps with a lot of things, and it's especially helpful when it comes to healing. If you combine the mud patch with the mud pot, what's it called, mud placer, um, with the other abilities, you should be able to heal exponentially faster and get back in the game. And that does it for the healing abilities episode. Um, if you liked it, please put a comment down below. Let me know what, what you th like, what you liked about it. Give me a thumbs up, and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, also. If you didn't like it, go ahead and put a thumbs down and let me know what I can improve on. I just want to keep making my videos better um, so you guys can get helpful information and enjoy my videos a little bit more.